Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for watching. My sister asked me if I could make her husband a birthday present for a charcuterie board that he's always kind of wanted. She asked me if I could make it a little bigger than most of them out there, but she also wanted something that looked cool, however also matched all of the stuff that she already has. So I came up with this kind of black smoke design. I'm really happy with how it turned out. This is how I made it. I hope you guys enjoy. So like all epoxy projects, before you do anything, you gotta clean up the edges of your wood. Epoxy doesn't stick very well to bark, so you really do need to clean it up. My favorite method is using my grinder with this wire wheel attachment. If you've seen any of my videos, you know how much I really like this way of doing it. Sandpaper will work, but it'll kill your hands, and as you can tell, using this takes it off like it's nothing. It's a pretty inexpensive way to do it as well. If you want to try this for your epoxy project, I will link a grinder and a wire wheel I think will be really good for you to use. In my opinion as well, it also takes it off much better than just sandpaper does. I think I did this whole side in less than a minute and it cleaned it up like nothing was left. Once that was done, you have to find a way to cut your board properly. If you get most wood from wood suppliers, you'll find that both edges are live on each side. However, a lot of charcuterie boards and a lot of live edge projects have their river running down the middle. So that means you gotta cut it somehow, put your two live edges in the middle and your two clean edges on the outside. And this way works amazing. All you have to do is take a very, very thin piece of wood, in this case, it's just a eighth inch piece, and tape it to the bottom. You can use hot glue, which is probably a better method than what I tried. Now that you have it taped to the bottom, you have a nice, clean, flat edge to run down your table saw. And then this way, you'll get it really even. The best part is, you don't really even have to measure, you just gotta get it close to the middle, and you can cut through. However, you do have to make sure you go real slow when you do this. You don't want to push too hard or too fast because you're going to get a kickback if you do that. But if you just take your time and take it easy, you're going to really love how this works. I think this piece of wood that I'm using to cut underneath cost me maybe two or three dollars. And it'll have a bunch of uses after. And as you can tell, it worked great. You get a nice, straight, clean cut that you can put into a form all while keeping your live edges perfect. And now that you have your wood all prepped, you can make your form. This is the Craig Rip Cut. As you can tell, I have a pretty big table saw, but when it comes to cutting big pieces of 4x8 sheets, it's really hard unless you have some sort of outfit table and a pretty big shop. But if you see how this thing works, it's amazing. It cuts up to I think about 4 feet and as long as you have a straight edge, you can cut things no problem. This is a pretty big piece of melamine and it's really heavy to handle. And this rip cut gave me so many nice straight clean pieces to make my form with. I actually prefer to use this more than my table saw when I can. I'll link this in the description below so you can get one as well. But if you don't have a big table saw or an outfeed table, this thing is really handy. Now that I have all the pieces cut for my form, you can tape it up using something called tuck tape. I think in some of my other videos, I've called it Tyvek tape. Uh, that's because you tend to use it with Tyvek paper as a wrap for the outside of your house. But epoxy doesn't stick to this. It also doesn't stick to melamine. So using both of these is pretty overkill. But as you're about to see, this is amazing if you plan on making a few projects. it will really help with cost in the future. 
it's really easy to pull your mold out of something that's made of melamine and tuck tape. It's also really inexpensive to use tuck tape as well. You don't have to use both, but they really do help for a longevity of a mold. And pretty much the most important part to building your mold is making sure you seal your edges. Now silicon or caulking do this really well. However, once you do this, you have to make sure your caulking dries. So make sure you leave enough time to dry it before you put your mold in. Because if you loosen up any of the caulking or the silicon, you're gonna create holes which will make a blowout and then you're gonna lose a lot of expensive material in epoxy. As you can see, all I'm doing is running a black felt tip marker edge down the edges of the silicon. This will actually clean it up really well. It'll leave just a very, very fine mark and seal in the edges. And then once it's dry, you can just peel off the excess and you're left with really nice, clean mold edges. I'll link some of my previous videos in the top so you can see a little more in depth on how I do this. A very, very important thing you want to do before you start putting this in the mold is you want to decide your pattern because the live edges can give you a couple of different looks and you want to be happy with the one you end up with. You certainly don't want to put this in the mold and take it out and put it back in and take it out until you find one because that's going to scuff up your newly sealed edges and that's going to create a blowout. And that's going to be a pretty expensive mistake in the end. So just make sure you're really happy with your design before you finally put it in. And then once you are, you can set it in and you're going to have a really great look. Once you've done that, you do have to clamp it down. I just use uh, these old um, boards that I had from a project to kind of clamp it down because my workstation is pretty big. However, any way to keep the wood from floating in the epoxy will work. A lot of people use weights, which works great, or even just something heavy in general. Or if you can just get it to the edge of a table and clamp it down that way, that'll work great. You just gotta make sure that when you pour the liquid in, that your wood doesn't start floating. I'm not going to go over too much the measurements because um, there's a lot of different calculators and a lot of different ways uh, to measure how much you're going to need. You just have to Google which one you're going to like and there are just tons out there. However, if you guys want to know the one that I use, leave me a message or a comment and I'll be happy to show you the math that I use for it. And next up, we get to mix our epoxy. I use this brand called Ecopoxy. It's a Canadian brand and it's really good. It's got a pretty long curing time so it gives you lots of time to work with and it's extremely easy to use. It's generally a two to one mix. All the other epoxies out there all have different kinds of mixes. Some of them are one to one, some of them are a different kind of calculation. Uh, this one is a pretty common one. It's your two to one mix. The great thing I really like about Eagle Poxy is that if you're not 100% bang on, it'll still turn out really great. You do have to be really close, but you know, you don't exactly have to split the atom to get it bang on. Your bigger concern in this situation is making sure you mix it properly. You need to make sure you have it well mixed. It tells you to mix it for about five minutes or until it's about clear. I personally just, you know, take the full five minutes to mix it, even though it's pretty clear before then. As you can see, to mix it, all I'm using is a spoon in my drill. I get these spoons from the dollar store. I get like a pack of three of them for a dollar. They're an amazing way to mix your epoxy and all other kinds. And now it's time for your color. This is a liquid pigment. I'm not going to be using this one, but it works really good. This is black. What I used for this particular project is this pigment. It's called a metallic pigment. 
and uh, it looks really cool. You do have to use a good decent amount for this. I like to use an entire cap full for about one of those pitchers that I use, which is about 9 liters. Um, I was talking with uh, the guy I get this from, my supplier, and he was saying that you pretty much either use a little bit for a tiny effect or a lot for a really good effect. There's really no in between with this particular pigment, but you put in this cap full, and as you can tell, it really fills in, and once we pour it in, you're going to see how cool this effect really is, and just how easy it is to do. And just like that, it's a really good, solid color of black in there. And in a minute, you'll see just how cool you can make this. When you use this pigment, every board really comes out in a different, unique pattern. And it's really hard to mess this up because it comes out looking cool pretty much however you uh, make this out to be. I always like to keep uh, just a small stick or you know a chicken skewer or something like that around when I'm working with epoxy because it's a good way to kind of uh, mix things around. But as you can tell, just this simple powder gives you such an awesome look. It's so easy to do. If you guys ever really want to try something different, I strongly suggest using these metallic pigments. They come in all different colors and they come out looking really cool. But just be sure you have something that you can kind of swirl around to really get the best effect out of it. Like I said before, my big concern was trying to get a really kind of smoky look through this. I'm going to show you how I completed this, but to start off, you kind of had to give it kind of a swirl, but not too, too much that it just looked like curls. It had to be a more natural swirl look. And after popping the bottles, you just got to do it, you know, a couple times here and there. But in its pure clear form it looks so cool it's almost like a galaxy in this uh, idea every once in a while a hole sneaks up on you that maybe you didn't notice until you start paying a lot of attention I like to keep these syringes on hand they're dental syringes I get a pack of them from Amazon for like next to nothing they're really great for doing this. You can just take whatever epoxy you have in your mold, squeeze it up in there, and then just kind of inject it right to the hole. It'll get the hole completely full, pretty nice and easy. And I don't know if you can tell there, one of my biggest things is I like to fill in the edges of my epoxy mold so that all four corners are full of epoxy and I'll show you why in a minute. But as you can tell, this little syringe fills in this tiny hole really great. And then whatever you don't use, you can kind of just squeeze back into your uh, main river there. Now that we're all happy with how it's cured, we're gonna demold it. And like I said before, I like to use melamine and tuck tape together. Demolding this is like nothing. It comes right out. You don't need to use a mold release. You don't need to use any kind of spray or oil. I don't like mixing any kind of other kind of chemicals into the epoxy. I don't know what reaction I'm gonna have. So using this method, both the melamine and the tuck tape, makes it come out really easy. And I'm able to use this mold for a whole bunch of other projects. Look at that, perfect. And as you can tell, I've got a very thin layer of epoxy through the bottom. However, I did get some caulking get caught up in the actual epoxy river there. That's not a big deal at all. We're going to cut that out and I'm going to show you why I fill it in. Because my mold was perfectly square, now that I filled in the edges with epoxy, anything that was unlevel or unsquare will be made completely square by the hardened epoxy. So now, the rest of this project will be really easy. We'll be able to take it to our table saw and cut it in a perfectly square way, just be left with the wood on each side.
So all we have to do is just run it down our fence and we'll get exactly clean, square cut edges for this board. And like I said before, my sister really wanted a nice, big charcuterie board. This is a little bit bigger than you would normally get. I think it was like, I don't know, 24 inches by about 18 inches. It was a pretty big one. But just like that, you get a nice, straight, clean cut. And all you had to do was just pour a little bit of extra epoxy around the edges. And this made this really easy. No track saw needed, no nothing. However, if you do have a table saw and you don't have one quite big enough to do this, you do just have to set your fence maybe to be a couple of centimeters and you can run this down the edge of your fence on the inside and still cut yourself a nice clean edge that'll still end up nice and square. So if you have a smaller hobbier table saw, it'll still work just as good. On this edge, I cut off just a little bit extra to make sure I would get rid of that little bit of caulking that got caught in the river there. But because we had nice clean edges, it was really easy to cut this out and still end up with a square side. Now, as you can tell, when you're pouring an epoxy project, it's really almost impossible to get it all level with the wood and the river. So I'm going to use this little thing that I built. I built it out of just the extra melamine that I had with a couple of just tracks that I put on, on the side there to keep it from, you know, bending in. It's just a little uh, router sled. It's really easy to use. If you have a router, this is a pretty heavy duty DeWalt one that I got specifically for this. But if you build a router sled, you can use pretty much any router. You just got to build it to your specifications. In a future video, I will be going over all the jigs and little table ads that I have for all my projects. But this is really easy way to flatten it up because all you do is just run it over. Heads up though, if you don't want to make a mess, don't use this method because it's going to create so much dust. And unfortunately the bit that I've got for it uh, was really starting to wear down. So for this project it was actually creating a lot of smoke as well. I thought it was overworking it a little bit. But I was barely dropping it here and there. I think it's time for a new bit. You can see how smoky it was in my shop and also how dusty it was. However, it did get it flat pretty fast. with the exception of the actual router marks, it got it to where I need it. I think it only took me about 20 minutes to do this. This is just a little rigid uh, table sander that I got. It was pretty inexpensive, but it's come in handy more times than I can count. I use it to round off edges on certain things. I thought I'd give this a nice little rounded edge to see how it worked out, and I was really happy with it. The entire unit is actually hollow, so it's really easy to move, it's really light, and it's very, very powerful. It even comes with a nice little vacuum attachment so you can keep all the dust out. And I thought I'd try this little curved edge on this board. I'm really happy with how it worked out. Funny thing is though, since I tried it, if I didn't like it, it was going to be too late. Personally, for the charcuterie boards I build for people, I always suggest putting a really, really deep round over edge on each side. See, if it's really curved on both sides, it'll give it a nice soft look. However, that's not why I do it. 
When you put this on the table and it's time to lift it off, this curved edge makes it really easy to slide your fingers over. And people are usually really happy when I suggest putting this in. Now, see all these sanding discs? A lot of you are probably saying, George, I don't have any kind of router sled, I don't have any kind of table sander, I don't have anything that. Well, guess what? A sander and some time and a lot of aggressive pieces of sandpaper will do it just fine. It'll actually take all of those processes over. But a sander can get gunked up with epoxy really easy. That right there is a sand erase disc. And as you can tell, it brings that disc almost like new. So you can really extend the life of your sanding discs with that. Every time it gets conked up with epoxy, you run it through and it'll clean it up really nicely. It doesn't make your discs last forever, but you really do get much more of a life out of them. I think I got that one off of Rona. However, I'll link one up from Amazon just so you guys can see which one exactly I'm talking about. And just because you don't have a router sled or anything like that, doesn't matter. Just a lot of really low grit sandpapers and a palm sander. And that'll get you to the same result, I guarantee it. That right there was sanded with 40 grit sandpaper. Even at that point, it looks like it's coming out really great. And now it's time to sand up to the next levels. I think I went 40, 80, 120, then 220, then 300, and finally I think it was, I last it off at about 400. When you get to the sandpaper that high, it's pretty hard to feel the difference, but you really do notice it after you finish it and seal it. But right now, I mean, this thing felt like it was silk. It was so smooth after that. Now that I got my sanding done, it was time to get some sealer on there. I had a whole bunch of these syringes left over. Uh, this isn't exactly a pro tip, I just wanted to try it. And I gotta tell you, waste of time. The finish I tend to use for this particular board was very, very thin. It wasn't quite as thick as most finishes, but even still it was too thick for this. So I don't suggest you guys use this. Save these syringes if you decide to get them for just filling in your really small holes and your really small cracks. I just ended up using this napkin, dipping it in, and then just letting it drip over. But like I said, this finish was extremely, extremely thin. However, this is, in my opinion, the best food safe finish you can find. It's super easy to work with, it's very safe, you can put all the kinds of food on here and it's really easy to clean after you finish it. The only thing is, you gotta make sure you finish both sides at the same time. Don't leave one side for the other side. So if you don't have enough finish and you gotta leave the one side while you go out and get some more or wait for the next day, I strongly suggest you don't start it. Because what's gonna happen if you finish one side and come back to finish the next side the next day, you're pretty much gonna have something that looks like a boat because it's gonna warp out since one side is all finished and sealed and the other side might dry out. After you get that first coat in, you got to make sure you really, really work it in there. You want to make sure this whole thing is sealed nice and clean. But you don't want to leave any excess on there. So make sure when you buff it all out, you have this nice, clean, buffed out look. You certainly don't want anything that looks like that. So if you do have it, just keep buffing it out until it gets all nice and wiped clean. At that point, you'll be able to leave it for a day and then you can put in a couple more coats which will really get you a nice beautiful look. I just used regular paper towels to work it in. It works in really good. However, for your next couple of coats, a lot of us use these automotive cleaners. Um, just you get like a package of this stuff for like two something dollars. I got this from Canadian Tire. And uh, you don't want to use the heavy duty ones, you want to use just the regular ones. The heavy duty ones have a bit of a pattern embedded into them. This one is actually really clean, it's almost like a microfiber kind of cloth. 
and it really did buff it out nice and clean. However, this is sturdy, so one piece will pretty much get it nice and buffed in, and you'll have a beautiful look once that's done. And just like that, I got this present for my brother-in-law. This beautiful kind of smoky look in the middle, even though we used a metallic pigment, it came out great. I'm so happy. I think he's really going to like it for his birthday. What do you think? If you guys like this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, comment on any questions you might have. I'll be more than happy to answer for them. Thanks for watching, guys. Until the next video, I'll see you soon on New Classic Designs.